yeah, I put my dad in the street against a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad, I've punched him a few more times. There's five blokes outside my front door, you coming out. One hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned. This is Colin McGuigan for AFL TV, proudly sponsored by Everlast, joined here by Jamie Conlon at the Conlon Fight Week Hotel. Jamie, how's things? It's all right. All right, Colin of AFL. Colin of AFL, Colin. I knew you were going to slag me about this. First of all, you were known as the Mexican in your fighting career. You seem to have that Mexican promoter style where you just love these blood baths. I was sitting at that press conference today listening to Tyrone talking, the other fights on the card. Is that, is that something you're looking into, bringing the big time boxing back to Belfast, but interesting fights for the, the casual fans as well? I think that's what's needed. A um, bit of both. A bit of building up prospects, building up fighters. You know, they build up a profile of a fighter by giving them fights to kind of grow, learn, um, warm into the public. Then also, you need them fights what is really intriguing that when someone looks at the bout sheet they're not going to say yes this side of the cards all going to win and this side of the cards all going to lose you need to have some intrigue in it you need to have some fights where you you, you don't know who's going to win but you're excited to see who is going to win and you don't really care who loses because it's a fight that's excited you you've got your money's worth and, and you went home happy and I think with a lot of the fights that's on this card maybe four, five, six of them, you're going to be very, very, very happy at the fights. You've transitioned seamlessly into this role as a manager promoter. Did you ever see yourself as in that role when, when you were younger, maybe throughout your fighting career? No, never, never. Just listen, every day is, is a blessing. I'm very lucky to be doing what I'm doing. Um, it doesn't feel like work or anything. It is stressful, but it's it's enjoyable. Um Boxing has always been part of my life. To continue it on, you know, without getting punched in the face is, is definitely something that is uh, <laughs> that, that makes me happy. So, yes, it's it's great to be part of it. It's great to be part of these these fighters. Some of the fighters now, like Tyrone, live with me in Spain. Potty, I've been with as an amateur. Pot, Tyrone as an amateur. You know, fighters and like coming through with my generation, but these new fighters coming through. You know, the likes of Kurt, well, Kurt would have been in my dad's team, so he would have been at our house a lot, and Kieran, and, you know, the, the younger guys like out there, you're going, this is all fresh blood, these are all new kids going through, and feeding off their energy, seeing their hunger, seeing their drive, you know, it's, it's brilliant to be around. We'll start at the, the top of the card with you, um, obviously with your, your brother's fight, it's a massive fight for Michael because of the fact that he did lose in dramatic fashion last time out. This is a, a massive fight for him. A test, some people would probably say, is tougher than what, what was expected. A lot of people would have expected an easy enough comeback fight. Um, Michael and you didn't choose that route. Why not? Um, the goal for Michael is to become world champion. Become world champion. So we thought the best route back to become world champion is to fight someone who is kind of... <sighs> The toughest route, the best route, the quickest route to get is the world title without being a world champion. And Miguel Mariaga was that guy. The guys who beat him are either world champions or are are world champions or become world champions. And that's kind of why we're why why Miguel was after that idea. And that why I liked the idea when I spoke with Carl Moretti on it was, you know, it's a fantastic test. It's the good way to put behind what happened in them in the previous, but learn from the mistakes that was also made in them because Miguel Mariaga is going to be putting you in the same positions that, that Lee Wood had him in. So none of them, and, and, and that faith with Wood definitely has made him a better fighter, a better man, a better, a better person. Um, he's learned a lot, learned so much, grown so much, and I think we're going to see that against Mariaga. Mariaga is very, very dangerous, heavy-handed. He's going to test him in different ways. He's going to make him... F so if he, fought, would have, if he would have fought someone who was a pick him or a handy one, as they say, he would have still had people with... You know, criticism and lingering doubts then that's just going to prolong on to something big which could grow and fester and, and, and become something that it doesn't necessarily mean or need to be so the best way to get to get back on the saddle and is, 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 is against Miguel Mariaga is against someone who is going to give you the gut checks is going to give you the chin checks is going to be putting you in the positions and going to test everything that, that uh, you had tested against Lee Wood and 
you have to learn from the mistakes that was made in that fight and, and rectify them and, and show it show it against Moriaga. Obviously, I know personally how hard you pushed for the Lee Wood rematch. You wanted it, they didn't. Why do you think they didn't want it? I understand why, why. Why would you want to take a fight that pushed you to the brink, literally the brink, no matter what he says, the, the brink of whatever he had left? For what? I mean, if he well, if he doesn't fight Leo Santa Cruz again, what's he doing it for? If I'm being pretty honest. Um, but it, he had stated that he didn't want to fight Mick for more money. Um, he would have took less money to fight Leo Santa Cruz than he would have took to fight Michael. He's getting less money to fight Leo Santa Cruz. Why do you not fight him? All this weight, but from their point of view, I understand why you wouldn't, why you wouldn't fight Michael. If you're, if you're going to try and fight Leo or Josh Warrington in unified the division or become super world champion, super duper champion, whatever it is, I understand that completely. And then coming back and fight Michael, and, and obviously he has... Um, Things he needs to rectify against Michael, it's I, I completely see it. But if you have an opportunity to go and fight and and, and whatever for a unified world title, then then that's why I would that's why I would do it. But if you're not going to do it and you're going to fight Kiko Martinez, why should not fight Michael? Do you think there's a possibility that after this fight that Michael could then campaign for the rematch once again? Do you think there's an opportunity one of it happening in, in Belfast and two? Do you think it'll happen at all? Uh, no, I don't think so. I think he'll fight Kiko and then try and fight Warrington, which is just a fight. And then he'll try and fight Mick if he gets beat by Warrington because it's a money fight. Um, Mick will need to beat Mariaga. New back in position. We'll be trying to do Lee Wu then after that. Lee fits uh, after that. Warrington has a very tough ass against Lopez, who uh, beat Isaac Lowe. So that's like, like things will get tied up. The only way is you know the Warrington fight doesn't happen to October, November, with the jaw maybe December. If that happens, if that's the delay and that's the timeline, then Mick and Lee Wood in December. It's the perfect timeline. Then. The f- perfect timeline to fight each other in December. I'd agree with you. We'll move down the card a bit. Obviously, Tyrone McKenna in a, a domestic dust-up as such against Chris Jenkins. He's labelled it as a bloodbath. I've spoke to Chris Jenkins today. He said it's going to be a bloodbath. Do you agree? I agree, yeah. Um, and they, they took it so quickly, to Chris Jenkins' team. It was insane. Usually when you get a call back a minute later, two minutes later, it's usually from Gary Lockett and... and, and Usually they say, ah, he's going on holiday or he's got something coming up, but that's usually a no, and yet it's a bad saying. But it was yes, straight away. <laughs> when you hear that, then you go, oh, shit. <laughs> he's been preparing for this a bit longer than he than him. So Jenkins took it with both. T- it's a real crossroads fight. The winner who the winner can go on. I think if Tarun wins, Florian Marku should be the fight because Jenkins uh, was beating Marku until he got stopped. Um... It would be a fantastic fight, another another great fight, fantastic fight for the fans. But if he loses, where does he go? You know, back to back losses, very very hard to come back with after you know when you after you turn thirty. Jenkins as well. If he loses, where does he go? But if he's if he wins, he's back in the mix with different fighters in the Welderweight division. Welderweight division in the UK is is hot, like so. Tyrone, six foot two, skinny Southpaw Welderweight is it's intriguing me to see what way he can. He said he used to deplete himself so much at, at 140 that it took a lot out of him on fight night. So if, if that's true, I'm very excited to see what kind of Tyrone turns up. I do think it's just going to be meet in the middle and, and let shots go. Doesn't go to distance for me. Does not go to distance. I don't think it even goes past eight. Agree with you on that as well. And obviously the, the next fight that we'll talk about is another massive fight because it's Potty McCrory and Marco Antonio Paraban. Paraban comes to this fight obviously with a, a decent enough resume. This is a tough fight for Potty McCrory. What would a win for Potty McCrory on Saturday night do for his career going forward? It's a big fight for from an Irish boxing context. Potty McCrory started on small hall shows 
earning very little, if any, selling tickets. Um, working his way around the circuit, didn't really have a promotion promoter behind it, didn't really have any real backing. And he's just gradually, gradually built up this kind of cult following from playing on football teams, playing on GAA teams, getting bigger and bigger, and then start knocking people out. He looks so deceptive from what he can do. He looks limited in terms of his technical ability, but he hits like a like a hammer with both hands. And he's just starting. To, he got a few highlight rate knockouts. I remember one time he, he knocked someone out in a Devonish complex in front of about 200, 300 people. Lennox Lewis is retweeting it and tweeting about him, and all these different like former world champions and like icons of the sport are all tweeting Paddy McCord's video, and it kind of propelled him on the next level. He's just constantly going. He's a family man, very humble, very family man, understands that didn't come in from the old fan for, had to build a real rapport himself, and he's doing amazing. That's to say, he's riding the crest wave, and he's, he's living the dream of every, every hard-working blue-collar pro boxer that, that comes into this sport the hard way, and has been built up the hard way. This test, it's not a step, it's, about a, it's a leap. Uh, Paraban, yes, is going, getting on in age, but has mixed at levels that party can only dream of. You know, Boatsy, Barry Jack, people like that there. He's, he's, you know, he's been there, done it, wore a t-shirt. It's going to be very interesting. You know, where does party go next? Party has, Jermaine Brown is coming over, who's on Sky Sports. Froggy Feeling is coming over. They're coming over, like, I'd say they're coming over to show Jermaine trains a mix, so he's also coming over up, but also he's coming over to watch Potty. Uh, Potty, uh, Rocky Feeling, I think there's a few scousers coming over, but he's coming over to watch Potty. It's insane. Like, but we have purse bids for the EU title um, with Tamba, I think, on the 11th. Um, we get them out of the way, we'll see what we do there for, for October, Denver Potty. But this is, again, I don't see this going past five rounds. You at uh, Conan Boxing, together with Michael, have recently signed Potty and Tyrone to the stable. Um, somewhat of a, a difference to compared to the prospects that you have been signing. Is that because you've got a you feel an allegiance to those two as your friend, or is it more so that you think that you can do something for their careers at this point? Both, both, um, and they're they're easy to work with. They're a dream to work with. You want to help? It's not like people who just bait your hand off. These are people who, you know, they understand the effort and time that you put in with them, and, and I understand what they're doing and, and have been there with them. So, if I can help get them opportunities, it's, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm there for them. So, but also their success, you feel part of it, and, you, and it's just kind of, you know, the raid is, is very fun, and um, whatever I can do before, before they end their careers, it's, I'm, I'm here for them. and yeah, I think definitely some big fights are out there for them um, after these fights, if they both come out the other side. And that's why I said at the press comes today, this show is pivotal for the future of Irish boxing because them two need to win. Mick needs to win for big fights to keep coming to Ireland, keep coming to Belfast. And you know, we go further on down the card, the, the younger lads, well, you know, they need them to win because they need fights on the back of it. We'll go to your next Conan Boxing sign and another guy who's just recently joined the stable in Lewis Crocker. We have some unfortunate news about him today, I think you have to... He got a, a cartilage damage on his rib in his last spar. Um, first camp away with Adam Booth. Adam very rarely is waxing lyrical about, about fighters, but thinks that Lewis Crocker is a mix between David Hay and Ram Burnett. Um... He says he has the fast switch movements of both and the heavy handed of Hay and you know, very, very excited what Lewis can do. Um, I've sung his praises from the first time I've ever saw him as an amateur when at fourteen, fifteen he's knocking people out cold and you know this guy is, is different. Getting away from home, getting away from his comfort, getting into an environment where he's a full time professional athlete, you're only gonna see the best of him. People have only seen about forty percent of Lewis Crocker. I'm very excited for the future. Very, very excited. Obviously then, we've got Kurt Walker, who's a stable mate of Mix, someone who obviously has worked closely with your father. You signed him. He had two unbelievable items for his first time as a pro on the Taylor Catterall undercard and then the Fury White undercard. How do you think he fares on Saturday night? Well, Kurt, in his third fight, is jumping up a few levels, 17-3, and three, Argentinian. Really, really seasoned Argentinian fighter. Um... 
and I'm excited Kurt needs these kind of tests to kind of bring the best out of him when he fights a lower level journeyman he kind of can stoop to their level at certain points in the contest and this is this is what we identified in his last fight on the Fury undercard is that he didn't really perform great against the full on journeyman so he needs these tests um, to, to give him a kick up the backside and perform he's an elite athlete an elite, he was an elite amateur Olympian I just said European champion come off games silver medal you know, beat the world champion in the Olympics you know this this guy needs that kind of competition the kind of spur him on Kieran Malloy next obviously a tough start as a, as a pro he was on the Taylor Catterall on their card he performed well there. He got the stoppage win, but then he had a bit of unfortunate news when he was in New York and his COVID, his opponent contracted COVID. Um, how do you think he first Saturday night? And you excited about seeing him out in Ireland for the first time? Very hard to get him matched. Very hard to get him matched. Him and Angel in, in the gym in Lothborough are curating a bit of a reputation because of his heavy hands and how strong he is and, and how hard he can punch. So all the reports I hear back, Robert Garcia seen him for a week and was ringing uh, Bruce Trampler and uh, and Brad Goodman of top rank the match mirror's top rank saying you've got a superstar here because he was just putting people over left right and centre in the gym sparring and again very young this is a new breed coming through like, and, I, and I say pivotal this this show being pivotal for what happens next in Irish boxing like Kieran Malloy should after this all being well Go to Galway, tap his own bill in Galway. Like, like this is bring, keep going, bringing stuff back to Irish boxing. And I think, like I've thought, thought this again, same as Cracker. When I seen him at very, very young, like, super strong, super strong, super talented, mixing it at a, a way above his own age groups and stuff. At sixteen years of age, going out to LA, Freddie Roach trying to get him the same pro, going around all the Southern California gyms, Manny Robles' gym, like, and you're going like this guy's. <laughs> Only like 16, 17, just getting in, blattering all, his, all the season Mexicans. And they couldn't believe who the white boy was in, in the gyms. Um, so, very excited about the future. Uh, like, it's a slow process. It's a long term um, it, It's a long term project where we're taking things step by step. Still very young, still has to learn all different styles, still has to spar different styles. And, you know, we see different sides, what he's going to res- uh, how does he respond to different things coming back to him. So, yeah, very excited about him. As the promoter of the show, we'll not go through the rest of the undercard, but what's your pick of the rest of the fights that are on the card, and why do you think that that could be potential for Fight of the Night? Well, it's going to be very hard to tap the top three for different reasons. Mika Moriaga, world class, um, it's a world class fight. I think Moriaga can. Can do damage at any time, but Michael has to show silky skills and be very, very smart, and can also ping Mariaga, <sighs> McKenna, and, and Jenkins. I see nothing but war. Potty and, and Parabon, I see nothing but war. But I am very intrigued at Paddy Donovan against Tom Hill because this is a massive step for Paddy, Paddy Donovan, and he's been because he's been doing everything so easy. Tom Hill comes to win. He's bringing a crowd over from from Newcastle. He beat Ronan Day previously, put him on his arse as well. It's a real real fight for Paddy, and it's going to be the first time people are going to see how he reacts. So I'm, I'm very intrigued at that. For the fans out there who obviously at the moment maybe don't have a ticket for whatever reason, are there still limited tickets remaining? Can people still get these online? Very few, very few. We should be all done and dusted soon. And if you're wanting to watch this, where can you get it online? Uh, Fate TV. I'm very, very good at this. Fate TV. Uh, in the UK, ESPN Plus in the States. Perfect. Thanks a million, Jimmy. I'm sure we'll get speaking again after the fights. First of many with Colin McGuigan. Yeah, my dad in the street gets a heavyweight. I've gone back to the dad. I've punched him a few more times. Five blokes outside my front door. You coming out? One hell of a fucking story, so stay tuned. Welcome, Team Everlast, to the Team Everlast Fitness Download the Everlast Fitness app and find your greatness within.